Hey guys, yours truly, Jimmy Williams again, back with another great and informative video. As you can see, I'm here in the studio, just working on some things and trying to get out more content to you guys to help you build your businesses and to help you with this right here, this, this trillion dollar <laughs> computer that's sitting on top of your head, your, your brain, your mind, trying to give you something that's going to inject, you know, the right mindset in that mind, okay? Inject the right information, okay? To help you get to where you need to be in your businesses. Many of you know me as the Wisdom Economics Coach. I haven't been around as much as, as I'd like to as of late with you know, videos, things of that nature, because I'm working on some projects. But I thought it was critical and very necessary to give you some, some, some key things I want to share going into this, this next season in the spring, going into the summer. And this, this has prophetic implications. If you guys are spiritual out there, prophetic implications and things I'm going to share with you today as, as to where you're going to be going in life if you listen to what I'm going to say and apply it. Prophetically meaning the future, how you, how you see things going forward, how you actually you know, have access to walking into those things. It's prophetic and you have to take action to make sure you, that prophecy reigns true in your life and goes in the direction that you want it to go. There's work involved, All right? So let's get right into this. There's three things I wanna cover really quick. Number one, the SBA. Okay, some of you have been with me a long time and some of the people that I know you have other SBA, you got pending EIDL loans and things of that nature and you're trying to get them funded and you're having problems. Number two, I wanna to touch the power of not giving up. Even when people think that something you did something wrong or they don't understand you, it's, I'm, I'm gonna kind of tell the story of Job really, really quick in about two minutes here, uh, how his friends you know, accused him and said he did something wrong. He didn't. You know, if you guys read the Bible, Job was a righteous man, but his friends thought he did something wrong when he lost everything. But he had to persevere and get over it and keep pushing forward. Thirdly, I wanna to touch on the power of having a good work ethic and the power of having team mindset. Together, everyone achieves more. Oh, which one do you, and I'm going to talk about which one you think is more important, the team mindset, working with other people, or having a great work ethic, or is, it, or is it both of them, and when to draw a line on each one. Number one, let's go back to the SBA. My wife and I, this is personal here, I'm going to, I'm going to tie it in how it's going to help you. We're in the Atlanta, Georgia area. We live in an area outside of Atlanta called Conyers, and most of you know we have several companies. I've shared this story with you many, many times, and when you have companies, you know, you have to have, you know, even when you're making revenue, you need to find other creative ways to find funding to keep your companies going. You, don't, you never use all of your own cash. You borrow, you know, you find ways to borrow money, other people's money, OPM, to create wealth. You leverage that money by buying properties, businesses, income generating, you know, to fund what you're doing, income generating streams to, to build your network, to build your profits up. You never just take all of your own cash, right? When you do that, that's when you really, really, you cash poor and you, you can't tap into certain things that you have out there because they're wrapped up in the investments. You can't touch the money, so that's why you keep your cash. Well, my wife and I, we, we've been trying for nearly two years now with about five of our businesses from the SBA to get you know, extensions and get more money with the EIDL program so we can, so we can hire more people and build more businesses and, that nat of that, and things of that nature and start more companies. You know, We had a big setback and i told you guys more about this in another video where we had a setback in 2020 and we had, you know and right after that we had a big big year later that year and we had another setback recently last year and we've been back and forth with the sba and we were supposed to get funded really about 18 months ago and do you know up to this day we are now waiting for our funding but the process has been gruesome it's been hard and i'm telling you all of you listen to me what i'm going to say to you do exactly what I'm going to tell you. That this is something that we did. Here's what we had to do. We had to contact Congress here in, in Georgia. And our congressman's name, I'll tell you what his name is in a minute here. His name is Hank Johnson in, in my area. But first thing you do, if you're in the Atlanta, Georgia area, if you're one of the suburb, suburb areas, go to the Congress. Go to the website you know, and find out who your district congressman is or congresswoman is reach out to them and here's what you tell them i need you guys to send me a digital privacy release form a digital privacy release form i don't know what it is in other states but i know that's what it is here in georgia but if you're in wyoming wherever go to congress these people are paid they're supposed to be helping you with this sba problem the sba is what i'm hearing from what i'm hearing they're understaffed they're underfunded 
Remember, most governmental programs, they always have some issue. That's why the people, when you talk to them on the phone, they seem angry all the time. No one's really trying to help you the way you, the way you feel you should be helped with customer service. You just, you just feel it when you call them. And, and so they're lacking. They don't have the personnel. They don't, from what I'm hearing, they're well understaffed still. Even after hiring all these people they said they had, they're still understaffed. And that's why you're getting the negative energy when you call them. They don't want to talk. And, you know, you never get the right person on the phone. You try to talk to a supervisor. You can't get one. So to, to skip all that, go straight to Congress, say, hey, listen, my, my, most of you know this word, the word reconsiderations. Some of you are have, have your applications and reconsiderations for, for months now. Tell them, hey, my application has been in reconsiderations. I need the process to be sped up quickly so I can get my funding. Why is that so important? Because in about two to three weeks, all the money for SBA will be gone. It's probably about 15 billion, 14 billion left. And every day it's about 900 billion being, being allocated for funding. So we don't have much time though. We got about two weeks left. So you need to pick up the phone today or email them. Uh, the, guy, the person, <coughs> if you're in the Conyers area, it's, it's, it's Hank Johnson and the, per, the contact person is Candace Williams. And I'll put a link so you can see, I'll put her email and all that so you can look at it. But go and do that first. Tell them it's an emergency. I need to get access to my funding because my business needs, needs the help. Be very serious about it. Do not waste any time. Do this, when you see this today, do it today. And you know, the good news is my wife and I now, you know, after calling every other week, every other day for months at a time, sending all the documents, tax returns, all this stuff, the 4506T, if you guys are in the business, you know what that means. That's when they actually go to the IRS to check and see what your taxes are. If it's filed with them, the 4506T, and if it comes back, negative then you don't get funded but all of that it's just it was it's been a big hassle for most people but when you do that and you still get nothing you got to do what i'm telling you to do just the other day we called them and every application they have on file for us now is saying on the notes listen to this on the notes it's saying jimmy arlene you guys have a congressional inquiry we say what do you mean it means that you guys contacted Congress and Congress is telling us to speed up your application and get to work on it. Sometimes you can only do so much and you gotta, you know, you gotta get other help when, you, when it's not working for you by yourself. Use everything you have, use all your resources. Use Congress, because that's what they're paid for. Call them immediately, email them immediately and do exactly what we said. Number two, don't give up, okay? And I said all that just to encourage you, when you're at the precipice of something great in your life, not just with funding, the temptation to quit is always there. It's always there to say, you know, I can't do this. I just give up. I heard Denzel Washington say this about Will Smith after Will Smith, you know, had the issue with Chris Rock and, and went on stage and slapped him. He pulled him to the side. He said, he said, son, be careful. He told this to Will Smith, be careful. At your highest moment, the devil will come for you. Now, people who are not spiritual and not, you know, don't, don't really see that side of things won't understand that. But the majority of you understand there's good and evil out there. And when you're trying to accomplish something great, there's always kickback from the other side, the dark side, I call it. You got the light, you got the dark side. You got people, when, you get, when they have a gun in their possession, they are just straight up evil. They will do evil things with that gun. You give that gun to the right person, that gun, that gun will never go off unless it's absolutely necessary for the protection of their family or their livelihood. It's all predicated on who has possession of what. So when you're trying to do the right thing, there's always something against you. There's always an energy against good and evil, okay? No matter, no matter what it is, you got the Father in heaven, then you have satanic forces that, that oppose his people, period. So what I'm saying to you is when you're right, when you're right about to give up, if there's always something great about to happen. That's why you can't give up. As I said about Job, I was going to tell you about Job here. In the Bible, go read the book of Job. Even if you're not spiritual, go read it. Job was a wealthy man. He had everything. He had everything. Cattle, land, beautiful daughters. Had about 10 kids. Had seven sons, three daughters. And the father called him a righteous man, a man that had no spot. Perfect. Call him perfect, which means very mature. You know what I mean? Spiritually inclined to do the right thing all the time. And Satan in the spirit realm came before the father in heaven and said, you know, you favor that man. You love that man. He loves you back, but I tell you what, take, take everything from him. I, I guarantee you he'll give up on you. He'll turn his back on you. The father said, okay, go do, go take his wealth, do what you gotta do, but you can't take his life. You can't kill him. 
The devil came and took everything, took his land, cattle, you know what I mean? Everything that he had, all of his possessions, and killed his children. Then he took his health. He broke out with boils all over his body. He nearly died, but he didn't die. And all of his, listen to this guy, all of his friends were saying, why is bad things happening to this man? He's doing something wrong. He's sinning. What's wrong with him? And he's looking at these people, you know, and these are his friends coming to him. Joe, what'd you do, man? You did something wrong. What your MO, your modus operandi is, you, you're telling us you're a good guy, you know, but what are you hiding? Job said, I didn't do anything wrong. And the truth was, he didn't do anything wrong. You can do everything right, guys, and evil is still going to come visit you sometime. You're going to have people around you, and sometimes the people that are around you, unfortunately, you love them, you're trying to help them, but they're the same ones that will turn their back on you. They'll gossip about you and say bad things about you. You're trying to help them out of a situation. They're gossiping about you. What do they do? What's wrong? That's what happened in Job's situation. Job did everything right, but his friends were not convinced. Those are things that will make you give up if you're not strong, but I'm, I'm here to encourage you. Don't give up. Don't cave into what people are saying. You can't do that. You have to push no matter what. I'm not sure if you guys are getting this. And you're going to get the victory. In the end, the devil could not stop Job. The father gave him back seven sons, three daughters. They were, they were the fairest daughters in the land. The Bible says they were beautiful. The first three were beautiful, but the second three were more beautiful. He gave them back the same amount of wealth that he lost. And then some. Now, during the process, somebody who Job loved very much when he went through all he went through, his wife looked at him and said, why don't you curse God and die? Curse Yahuwah, curse Yahuwah, the Israelites, the Hebrews, y'all know what I mean when I say Yahuwah, Most High Yah, right? Tell the Most High Yah, you messed this up, curse him and go ahead and die, Job. Job told her, you're foolish, you're, you're ignorant, you don't know what you're talking about, I will never curse the Most High. So in all that we're going through, we gotta remember, it's not his fault, he allows things to happen, but he doesn't ordain your, he doesn't ordain you to fail. That's something you do and satanic forces will come and try to steal from you. In business and everything that we do, there is an opposing force. He didn't curse the most high. He told her, you're foolish, you back up. He kept his mouth right, his confession. What am I saying, guys? Keep your confession right, keep your mouth right. Keep your mindset right, even when people are saying evil things about you, and it's not true. Keep pushing forward at all costs. Finally, work ethic as opposed to team mindset. Work ethic, team mindset. Both of them are important, okay? The power of having the right work ethic, let's start, let's start there. When you know how to discipline yourself mentally, even more than the physicality, it's important to exercise and do all those things. If you want to stay healthy and live a long time, you're going to have to take care of the physical body. But the mental state of a person is even harder to, to, to transform and maintain and keep up. That's where all your major decisions are made. And you're, you know, when you transform your mind and your subconscious mind, that's going to lead your life. But you have to have the right mindset to do what you see Tiger Woods doing right now. He got in an accident less than two years ago, almost had his leg, leg severed, and he's in the Masters now and doing pretty good. That's, that's mentality. That's mindset. That's, that's the will to win. That's the, and not just having the mindset. When you get the mindset, now you got to put the work in. That can always, that can, that's not always physical work, but a lot of times it is. He had to go out and rehab and do all these things and to get his body back, and now he's in the Masters. And he might just make the cut to go and see if he can win this thing. As I'm speaking, it's Friday, you know, it's Friday, and he's in the second round, and he did one under par. Golfers would know that language, but, but my point is his work ethic was so great, he's able to get back and do it. This is what the great people like Kobe Bryant, he's passed, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, work ethic. They knew how to work. You know, they worked so hard at what they did put the work, and, and learned the craft so much, they were able to accomplish great things. That's my wife and I, we saw something the other day and we're like, Arlene, that's me and you. Me and my queen, my queen works harder than me. And, and I, I, I count myself like James Brown, I'm the hardest working man at what I do when it comes to real estate, mindset teaching and training and internet marketing. I think I'm the best at doing it. And you gotta have that confidence in yourself. It's not arrogance, it's confidence. 
but my wife works that much harder than me. We have that part of us and I learned from her, but, but we both understand with great mindset and great work ethic, it doesn't, you can't reach your fullest potential until you understand having a team mindset. And I'm closing. It's not all about you. It never really has been. It's just our, sometimes our narcissism and our, and our self, our self patting on the back, that, that selfishness about us, sometimes we think it is our selfishness. I hate to say that word, but it's true. You know, go look these words up. Narcissism, you know what I mean? Self-centered, those kind of things. We, we, if you have the wrong coaches and mentors in your life, they'll feed you that lie, not really understanding that's a, that's a, being selfish is gonna limit you. You have to think about other people, other situations, how you can be a blessing to others. If you wanna be truly wealthy, you have to create your wealth by helping and serving other people. You can get rich by scamming people. You can get rich by being an NBA star or, you know, or being some kind of athlete or something, right? But that's not true wealth. Wealth involves helping and serving other people. And the only way to do that, you have to have a team mindset. And I'm closing. I always tell you guys this, if you have the biggest stick, I'm being very graphic now, in the room, men and women, this is, this is, this is a metaphor. If you got the biggest stick in the room, then you're in the wrong room. You have the greatest mind in the room, you're in the wrong room. If you have the biggest idea and you, know, you can do all of these things and these people need to learn from you, I'm the man, I'm the woman, I got it. I, I got the big stick, right? You're in the wrong room. You need to be in a room with people that are greater than you, greater minds than you, greater ideas, greater strategies, greater methodologies, okay? Greater things that you can implement that's bigger than you. And then you need to don't be jealous of them, work with them to become more than what you are for the benefit, for the betterment of the team. Team, together, everyone achieves more. Team, team wealth. Don't try to make a million by yourself. Give your team 700,000, you keep 300,000. Even if you're the brains behind it, share with them because without them, you wouldn't have nothing. You, you, no, I said that wrong. You can have something, but you cannot reach your fullest potential and have more than you ever thought possible without them. You're gonna, you're gonna have a plateau somewhere in here and you're gonna stop right there because it's all about you. But the sky is not even the limit. The heavens are not the limit. The third heaven is the limit, right? The heavens we haven't seen yet when you work with other people and give them a chance to, to somehow in part and help you, help what you're doing become better, become more, more aggressive, more progressive, more futuristic. You have to be, and I always say this, being ahead, ahead of the competition is one thing, but staying ahead is another thing. You need to have people that can do things that you cannot do. And you have to humble yourself and understand that, okay, I have gifts, I have abilities, I'm a leader, but I need more leadership around me. The Bible says it this way, out of the counsel of many, you have wisdom. Wisdom comes in the counsel of many. Okay? The counsel of many, not a few. King Solomon, the richest man at that time, a Hebrew black man, I might add, because when, when people say, well, black people, y'all you know, never accomplished anything, you haven't been kings. This is the Hebrew king in Israel, many thousands of years ago, said what I just told you. Just to give you an idea of how wealthy he was, he was equivalent to 80 Bill Gates of today's money. 80 times 120 billion, he's worth like 120 billion, right? Times 80, that's what, that's, what, that's what this guy, King Solomon was worth. And even him, he had to get counsel of other men and women. Most of them were men at the time. To get in their brain and figure out right from wrong. What about you today? Do you need wisdom? You can ask the most high for it, but that's, Again, if it's just you with the wisdom, and that's it. There's a limitation. Ask your team for their wisdom and their, their input and build that. And trust me, you'll work less, you'll work smarter, and you'll make more money, and everyone can be blessed. That's it for the day, guys. I wish I had more time. I gotta get on another call. I'm gonna keep working in here until I get you some more good content. Blessings, have a good weekend, okay? And um, as I always say, See you at the top, because we'll get there together.